is Clipper and why do you want it? Anyone who's ever watched any of my videos where I've mentioned Clipper will know that I love it and I think you would too, but why? This video is sponsored by PCBWay. What is Clipper and why is it different to pretty much everything else you're likely to encounter when it comes to 3D printer controlling firmware? Well, before Clipper, on the whole, 3D printers were all controlled by Marlin firmware, which is an open source firmware based on the Arduino programming framework. Marlin was specifically designed for 3D printers and is a great lightweight solution that works on a huge range of inexpensive microcontrollers. This made it a great universal solution for all different kinds of machines. But as this method hard codes information to the controller's onboard memory, it's not that user-friendly when it comes to wanting to change something. Any configuration changes requires a firmware reflash, which gets old fast. The processing power of most 3D printers microcontrollers also limits their capabilities too. And as 3D printer hardware has advanced, so have the firmware demands. This is where Clipper comes in. Instead of the Marlin setup, Clipper uses Python code on a Linux operating system. Python is a very popular and powerful programming language that's now even being taught in schools and is very easy to understand and work with, even for beginners. Linux is an operating system that can run on many different devices from smartphones to supercomputers. One of the most common ways to use Clipper in 3D printing is with a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi, but it works just as well with an old laptop or even a smartphone. With the Clipper software running on a separate device like a Raspberry Pi, all you need is a one-time firmware flash on your 3D printer to enable Clipper on your more powerful computer to control your 3D printer. While this may seem like added complication and expense, for me, the benefits are well worth it. Firstly, in stark contrast to Marlin, making changes with Clipper is really easy. Rather than having to reflash the firmware for every configuration change, with Clipper, all you need to do is edit some text code and then restart the device. You can also take full advantage of any networking capabilities your Clipper device has, so remote control of a 3D printer with Clipper is pretty commonplace. You can add and control cameras, lights, and all sorts of other peripherals, and you can even control it all with a touchscreen too. It's not just about toys either. The main reasons why people switch to Clipper are for the potentially massive print speed and quality improvements. In very simple terms, the Clipper controller's higher processing ability means that it can think about more things at once than the lower powered microcontrollers typically use with Marlin. When this ability is used for printer movements, the real world results are smoother surface finishes and much quicker print times. For example, an acceptable benchy on my Marlin controlled Ender 3 version 2 would have taken about an hour and a half. The very same printer, but with clipper control, can produce the exact same thing in a third of the time. With other printers with more optimized hardware for these faster speeds, 15 minute or less benchies are very common. With small prints like these, the benefits might not seem that great, but if you ever print bigger objects, the time savings can be massive. While we're on the subject of time saving, it gives me a great opportunity to talk about PCBWay, our video sponsor. PCBWay are well known for their PCB prototype and manufacture, but did you know that's not all they do? PCBWay now have extensive 3D printing, CNC machining, and laser cutting options to help you massively increase your manufacturing abilities without having to invest in new machines or upgrades. Check out the links in the description for their full capabilities. Now, it is possible to get a lot of the Clipper advantages with Marlin and by using 32-bit control boards, but what I really like about Clipper installed on a separate device like a Raspberry Pi is that it can breathe new life into an older machine that might have otherwise be consigned to the scrap heap to be replaced by something newer and shinier. You could quite realistically take a two or three year old Ender style printer and upgrade it with a cheap secondhand Raspberry Pi and get a couple more years of high speed printing out of it, all for less than the cost of a couple of reels of filament. I also like the macros that can be used with Clipper. Macros are basically a way of activating a number of different processes with a single action like a button press. As Python coding is pretty simple to understand, it's also really easy to create your own macros to streamline any part of your 3D printing process. Instead of, for instance, telling your bed to heat and then telling your hot end to heat and then telling your printer to take a bed mesh, you can set up a very simple macro that will do all of it with one button press. Now, you can get as fancy as you like with these, but the point is it's really easy to customize your Clipper setup to work for you 
rather than you changing how you work to fit how a 3D printer manufacturer thinks you should. As an example of how much Clipper has helped me with my Marlin machines, when I wanted to print something I just sliced, I had to save the slice file to an SD card, get up, go to my workshop, turn on my printer, insert the card and wait for the printer to fire up. As the first layers were always a little unpredictable, I would always wait to watch to see that the print started okay. This would mean either manually selecting a bed and nozzle temperature and then starting the print, or starting the print and waiting for the bed and nozzle to heat up one after the other. If the first layer printed okay, then I might then go back to my office to carry on with some more work, but then periodically come and keep checking to make sure everything was fine until the print was finally finished. With Clipper, it's a very different story. While still sitting at my desk, I can now send the file directly to my networked machine, hit print, and then if for any reason, I think the first layer might be at risk of not going down correctly, then I can watch its progress through a camera, often from within the slicing software itself. Also, to be honest, I found that depending on the machine I'm printing with, Clipper first layers are always way more reliable than the same machines ever were with Marlin control. If I feel the need, then I can check on how things are going at various times during the print, but the only time I really have to get up from my office and go to my workshop is to remove the finished print from the bed. When you use your 3D printer or printers as a business, then every small time saving saves you money, and I wouldn't even consider running a print farm without everything having clipper control. You can often run more than one 3D printer from every Clipper device too, which obviously reduces the outlay if you want to upgrade to Clipper and you have more than one machine. There are lots of other benefits of Clipper and this video only scratches the surface of what's possible, but if you're ready to take the red pill and see what Clipper might involve for you, then click over here to see more of my videos where I dive a lot deeper into the world of Clipper and show you what's truly involved with every stage of setup. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.